Good afternoon, my friends. So today I've been sort of thinking about this in my mind and that's about um, this epidemic of zombie art. And I've already sort of covered this in one of my previous videos about uh, the truth of art, which you can watch uh, on my channel. But I just wanna go and focus more on this phenomenon because I think it's a problem, a uh, really big problem, especially in this current era that we're living in is this upsurge of like the zombie art. And so if I'm gonna like explain what zombie art is, it's sort of that, you know, palatable, very corporate sounding, uh, very unoffensive, very, you know, it doesn't make you feel anything one way or the other, very emotionless, very sort of just matter of fact exists to exist as art. And, you know, it's very frustrating as an artist because, you know, there's a lot of people making art in the sense of just trying to sell it as like this, you know, product basically, um, which art is, and I'm not going to detract from that statement that, you know, art is in a lot of ways a business and there's no reason why it shouldn't ever be that way. But part of being an artist and part of business in general is the concept of risk, the concept of creating risk in your art, because if your art isn't impactful, then it's not going to live long. It might be popular in the short term because it's perfected in a sense of craft and technicalities so people can be impressed by it. But if it doesn't take that risk of innovation, of creativity, of self-expression, of, like I've said before, creating this bridge to a higher realm of understanding, it's not going to stick around for long. It's going to be propped up on a momentary basis and then people will quickly forget about it. And this happens so often. And this seems to be a trend among artists where they aren't thinking long term about their art. They're not thinking about, is this piece that I'm creating, are people going to be going back and listening to this five, 10 years from now? And even still, those are not really long time frames to look at. You know, when I'm making my music and making my art in general, I'm always in the mindset of trying to create something in the sense of timelessness, right? And that's what true art is. And that's what every artist should strive for. The problem with that and the fear that surrounds that is that when you create something that's truly timeless, it's not going to ride the wave of whatever trend is happening, right? Whatever's trendy right now, it's not going to fit in because it's timeless. It doesn't fit into those, you know, little nuances in the art community. It sort of stands on its own, which is scary for a lot of artists because it makes you vulnerable. It makes you alone, first of all. You can't really attach yourself to any movement. You can't hide behind another barrage of other art coming in. And I think this is creating this influx of this zombie art because people don't wanna take risks in that field. They don't wanna take the risk of being timeless. And you know, there comes with a certain sense of integrity and honesty with yourself that if you know the basic guideline as being an artist is that you should genuinely enjoy your art, genuinely consume it um, in the sense that when I make my music, I'm always listening to it. It's my favorite kind of music to listen to is my own music. And this isn't an egotistical, you know, pride kind of thing. That was the reason I made music in the first place. You know, I wanted to look for music online and listen to things that I enjoyed in a timeless fashion, music that you know, I continue to go back to. I listen to a lot of older music because a lot of that music was timeless. And, and there's a lot of timeless music coming out today as well. But it's, um, you know, a lot of it also isn't because of this influx of the zombie art that's going on right now. So, you know, when looking at my own music, I realize, okay, like, I just want to make music that I enjoy. And there's a lot of music that I still continually listen to that I've made over like four or five years ago. And the technicality was, you know, subpar, I would say back then for me. So I much prefer my newer stuff because I'm much more efficient. I'm much more proficient. I'm better at creating music. So it's just a process. But 
if I don't achieve success in the music field, if I attain, you know, consistent failure and just keep going through life without ever achieving success, I'm never going to stop making music because I've, I always want it. I always want to listen to more music. And that's what's basically fueling me to constantly create more music is so that I have more stuff to listen to. As I get sick of older songs, I want to make newer ones. And, you know, there's a lot of artists who prop themselves up on achieving fame. And if they don't achieve that fame, then they just give up because it's like, oh, well, my dreams haven't been fulfilled, so I'm not going to do it. You know, if you're an artist, you're not doing the art because it's, you know, your desire to do that. And this is another thing, if you want to know if you're a zombie artist or not, if you're constantly looking at other artists and looking at their art and being like, oh, wow, I wish I could make that or like not in a technical sense. I'm talking purely in terms of imagination and creation and innovation. If you're constantly looking at artists and comparing yourself to their innovation or their creativity and thinking like, oh, I can't do that. Like, oh, I wish I could make something like that. I can wish I can make something that beautiful. Then you're not an artist. And that's, you know, you just have to accept that as a reality that that's not what your calling is. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy music. You can't enjoy making music or enjoy making art and painting and photography or writing in general. It just means that that's not what you're meant to do. And you have to find something else. As an artist, I, you know, I take inspiration wherever I can and I appreciate good art and I enjoy good art, but I will never think that my creativity and my imagination is somehow lacking from these other people. It's going to be different. It's going to be a different expression of what I believe and what my vision is, but I'll never wish for the innovation because I already know I have it. I've had it since I was young. I know what is there. It's just who I am. And if you're constantly comparing yourself that way, you know, take a look at yourself and ask, are you a zombie artist or not? And when I say zombie art, this isn't meant to make fe people feel bad who do make that kind of stuff. Because, you know, we're all trying to figure out what we want to do in life. And it's difficult to accept the fact that maybe this is not what you're supposed to do. And there's going to be a lot of wake up calls, I think, coming into this next decade of a lot of artists who realize this isn't what I'm supposed to do. Because they don't have that vision. They don't have that spark of creativity inside of them. And that comes from birth. That's a genetic thing. You know, there's people who are given gifts and they have to exercise that. And it doesn't matter how much you want it or desire to be like those people. The, the best case scenario is you'll become famous, but it'll be very short lived and you'll be forgotten about. Um, you know, that's just how it is. If you don't have that artistic drive or that passion or that vision, um, it's never going to work out in the long term. And that's the risk you have to take both as a, a fake artist. I, I don't like using those terms because I don't want it to devalue these people because they could be great at other things in life as well. You know, they could be great mathematicians. They could be great scientists. They could be great engineers. They could be great cooks. They could be, you know, great plumbers, contractors, you know, and this isn't to look down upon people who do those kinds of work. You know, everyone has a place in the world and what they're good at, you know, like I'm not a good, you know, worker. I'm not a good employee. I'm not, I'm definitely not good at customer service. I worked at a cafe for a year. I was horrible at it. I treated people like shit because it just wasn't for me. I did it anyway because I needed a job, but I know this is what I'm supposed to do. And there's this, it, it's so crowded with people that are not making art for the right reasons. And it, it is frustrating because these are people that should be, they have good skill sets in other areas in their life that they're not exercising because they are trapped in their own egos of, oh, I, I wish it was like this, or I wish I was like that. I want to be like this, you know, do what you're good at. And that's it. And, you know, what? I'm, I'm, you know, if I'm going to get a job somewhere doing something mediocre, I'm still going to continue making music, like I said, because I'll always love making it because I love listening to it. I'm making a product for myself and then sharing it with people. And there's a lot of people who listen to my music and feel the same way. I know this. I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to deny myself and pretend to be fake humble in order to get approval from people. I know people are affected by my music because people message me on, you know, 
a, a consistent basis about it and they're listening to music that's over four or five years old and they're still talking about it whereas there's plenty of famous celebrities right now I'm not going to name names but they they can get millions of plays on spotify but no one's talking about their music from like two or three years ago they're only focused on what's new and what's current because they're trapped in this you know this trend mindset right and this goes in terms with you know basically people who book shows people who set up concerts and venues and art galleries is that they are also focused on the short-term gain they're focused on the short-term progress of their gallery or their bookings or whatever they want to do related to art whether that's music or painting or what have you that they're so focused on the short term that they're only looking for music that's in a general sense palatable right i like to i like to think of it as like the gray hoodie and jeans of art you know it's not offensive it's fine to wear you're not going to get anyone who's like oh this is ugly you look like shit it's like you know you just you look presentable but no one's ever going to stop you in the street and say wow i love that shirt or wow i love those pants because it's boring it's simple it's whatever it is and there's a lot of art that's being promoted that way as a means to sort of you know be palatable and not create a sense of how should i say of conflict amongst the audience amongst the consumers of this product right because if you make something or you put out something that's truly innovative or truly different and truly a self-expression there's going to be people who hate it and there's going to be people who love it and it's going to be a clash and people are going they're going to pay attention first of all and that's the thing that people don't really want especially if they're hosting like a venue or an event they just want a dj who's going to play like just generic house music to play in the background so no one really thinks about it if they get someone who's going to play like really like impactful beautiful music you know it's going to distract people the people are going to be like what the hell is this or people are not going to be in conversation they're going to be absorbed into the music and love it and there's going to be people who hate it and they're going to leave the event it's too complicated it's too confusing and people would rather just make something that's generally palatable and it does the job of what they want and they don't really care and there's nothing wrong with that because ultimately people are just trying to get through their lives and they're just trying to put something in the background it's like oh yeah people like music we'll put music on and that's it the problem is is when that becomes the standard or the forefront of what art is supposed to be and what is being promoted as an artist of this is the path that you should follow is when you get into that mindset of oh i have to be like this in order to attain success there's no real way to do that you have to find it in your inner sense and in your inner soul and find out what is the message that you're trying to give people and if you don't have a message you don't have anything in your soul that you're trying to tell people what through art or what have you then you're not an artist and you should move on and try to do something else with your life it doesn't mean you should give up the hobby or anything just recognize that this is an overcrowded area especially of content creators you know this ties into art as well people who are content creators there's a lot of emphasis on filling the need for content and a lot of it is based off of what's the most palatable what is the most agreeable but it's not going to turn any heads it's not going to be you know interesting it's not going to make people stop and think it's just let's create content because we have to what's the most agreeable way to do this okay this is fine let's continue on with this and this has been going on for you know hundreds of years this isn't a recent phenomenon although it's sort of been it, it comes in waves so to speak there's always these renaissance periods of great art creation and then it sort of reaches a plateau and then a bunch of people copy that movement and it kind of you know fizzles out and people sort of forget what the whole point of that art was in the first place because they're just replicating it in order to create content because there's this need of something new all the time so you know that's something to keep in mind about the zombie art phenomenon because it's you know it is a problem and it's and it's arising from this whole netflix disney plus generation of this consistent need to generate content and it's why you find a lot of these shows like especially 20 years ago you'd have a show especially a good show run for 10 seasons and then you know it and or it would just keep going for 20 seasons or 30 seasons whatever right because 
there was a respect for that art, that creation, that innovation. Now with this stuff, it's like they're just creating content that's, you know, generally entertaining and they'll run it for one or two seasons and then move on to the next one because the audience will get sick of it because they don't care anymore. I'll find my next show that I'm going to watch because they're just watching this show because they have free time and they want to be mildly entertained by something. They don't want to actually have to focus in on a, a real show that requires a lot of time and energy. And, you know, it is what it is. And this isn't to discriminate against certain genres of film or anything or genres of music or genres of anything because this is a problem that permeates throughout like all art no matter what style or what have you whether it's pop or experimental or noise music even so you know that's something I think a lot of people should keep in their heads especially when they're consuming art or whether they're creating art think about the real reasons why you're making this are you making this because you feel like you just want to be like everyone else and you want to make this because you want to be popular or you want to be part of some movement, then if that's your reasoning, then you're going to have to give up on that. Because if you don't have a message to say, you don't have something important coming from within you, then your art's meaningless. And maybe it'll become popular and maybe it'll blow up in your face and you'll be in ecstasy and joy of thinking that you created something great. But just watch as that relevancy, that meaning of that art just gets cut down very quickly and everyone forgets about it. So that's all I have to say about that. And I hope you have a wonderful day.